It's the NFL on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Atlanta Falcons and the New England Patriots. All that and more coming up next. From the area known as Patriot Place, EA Sports set for football in Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here as it'll be the Atlanta Falcons taking on the New England Patriots. Up in the booth with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and kickoff straight ahead, CD. What's one thing that you're going to have your eye on? I think about what the great coaches of the past always said, the key to any ball game. Can you rush theirs and protect yours? Well, in this case, both of these teams get after the quarterbacks. I'm watching the pass rush. This one teed up, and we are underway. Off we go in Foxborough. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. And leading them out there, we get a look at their 6-3 quarterback. And you know how scouts always talk about checking all the boxes? I think this young man does exactly that when you're looking for an NFL quarterback. Proven leader, teams went 43 and six while he was in college, has speed, dual threat ability, and production off the charts while he was in school, and also did a nice job of limiting turnovers. When you put it all together, there's a lot to be excited about for this young quarterback. Now a first carry here for Robinson. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. You often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. Ball on the 30 now. Here's second down and a yard. A give to Robinson on the option. Able to take it up right down Broadway. He may go. John Robinson, 70 yards. And the Falcons need just two plays on their opening drive to take the early lead. Well, if they didn't get the wake-up call before the game, they got it right now. Two plays already in the end zone. I think of it in boxing terms because whether it's a big shot with your first one or a probing one, a little bit of a jab, the second one was the payoff. That was the big one that landed. One, two, end zone. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And that makes the score seven nothing. So two plays on that scoring drive. That's how they drew it up. And the long run into the end zone, and what a run it was. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. Now a hit and a loose football. And the Falcons grab it. And they have the football and will set up shop at the 33-yard line. And careless with a football there on the kick return. And one thing I love about going to practices is trying to get around coaches and hear their catchphrases and what they really emphasize. We haven't been to a single one yet this year where a guy fielding a kick, you don't hear, tuck it away, tuck it away, tuck it away. 
And this time, they turned it over. Ball security eluded him. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Working from the gun, Ritter. He's going to find Jefferson open downfield. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. A well-executed 22-yard gain. Well, as a coach, you absolutely love seeing your offense find their rhythm early, and that's exactly what we've seen so far. They had a touchdown on their opening drive, and now they connect here for another nice gain for a first down. This offense is moving the ball well, exactly as he drew it up in practice. Now Ritter to throw on first down. That ball is caught. It's London for the Atlanta touchdown. An 11 yard touchdown. And the Falcons are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Not even two minutes into this football game, already we've had two scores. You know how much I like to read about teams of old, right? The, the teams of yesteryear. There were some teams that were known as the point of minute teams. Well, obviously in a 60 minute game, that's 60 plus points. But two touchdowns in the first two minutes? My calculator doesn't operate that well. And now on the other side, they better wake up. They haven't even gotten off the bus yet. Koo able to connect on the extra point, and it's now 14 to nothing. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. Now a hit and a loose football. But it looks like one of the DBs has it. And they are going to take over right there at the 22-yard line. So problems compounding themselves here on the return. They just give up the touchdown, and now they lose the football. Yeah, partner, things are starting to unravel a little bit for them right in front of our eyes. They're going to be looking for some answers, and quickly. Off the play fake, it's Ritter. And incomplete on the deep ball. What I loved about meeting with these coaches before the game is we didn't even have to ask any questions. They told us that they were going to be aggressive or push the ball downfield. They weren't successful on that play, but look for them to try it again later. Second and 10. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. And he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. It's in the third and nine. Pretty good level two-point sequence there. You first see incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Ritter throwing on third down. And he's going to go down here and save. They push him back to the 34. Anthony Jennings gets in there to drop him for a loss of 13 yards, and it's also fourth down now. That's a step in the right direction defensively here because you're facing this sizable deficit. They're going to need more plays like that. A good sack, though, good effort there. And what you're hoping is, as you said, a step in the right direction, and that means it's something to build on. So you get the first one, and hopefully that can ignite them, and now they can make a few more plays and get back into this game. Koo knocks this one through the post. And that'll make this 17-0 here in the opening quarter. That was perfect. From distance, he steps up, knocks it right down Main Street. Yeah, Main Street's celebrating right now with him, aren't they? I love the mechanics of the whole thing. Snap, hold, everything was right on target, and the blocking was perfect, and he executed so, so well. So an early advantage now to Goodwin. 17-0 our scores. They kick this one away. 
And not willing to risk another fumble. He'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. So here come the Patriots getting ready on offense. And they will be led out by a man in his sophomore campaign as the quarterback. And he's a young man who's always believed in his talents. Didn't have many offers out of high school. Ended up at Houston Baptist and put up monster numbers. Decided to take the next step and go to Western Kentucky. And he did it again. Set NCAA records for passing touchdowns and passing yards in a single season. Now the big jump to the NFL. This guy's like a very skilled point guard. Knows how to deal and put the ball in the proper place with every throw. The drive starts with a carry by Stevenson. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. They suspected it was a power play up the middle coming at him. And boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. And Zappi to throw. Open man is Kendrick Bourne. And they work this well upfield across the 45. That one a gain of 20 in a first down. Well, these guys certainly need something good to go their way because this first quarter has been something of a disaster for them trying to move the ball. But that completion there maybe can get them focused and moving in the right direction. Zappi now on first and 10. Pass complete once again to Bourne. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. A gain of nine brings up second and one at the Falcons' 44-yard line. Seventeen nothing. Our score after one. Start of the second quarter from Foxborough. It's the homestanding Patriots with the football. From the 44-yard line, here's second and a yard. To the right side, he's got Parker. And Parker's going to pick up a Patriots first down as the tackle made at the 42. Two yards is the pickup, and it'll be first down, New England. At the 42-yard line. Up the middle, here's Stevenson. And good work there in open space. And he's got this all the way down now to the 32. The 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Patriot first down. That runs successful in large part because they had a lot of extra help blocking up front. Yeah, you've got guys who can do that very, very well. In addition, they can catch the football. So sometimes when they line up with three tight ends, it's not necessarily to run it. And that gives you an advantage when you do decide to barrel off the line of scrimmage and block people downfield. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. In need of only about the length of the football here on second down. Zappi. Over the middle, complete. It's Henry. And Henry's going to pick up a Patriots first down as he's down inside the 15. It goes as a gain of eight that moves the chains. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. From the shotgun, Zappi. And he's got it. Touchdown, Patriots. Juju Smith-Schuster, a 14-yard touchdown. And the Patriots are able to cut into that deficit. The catch and the touchdown, they were the end result of a terrific route run by the receiver. Chad Ryland now to add the PAT. And it's 17-7. 
So that one, an eight-play drive. It spans 75 yards. And it's capped off by the touchdown from Juju Smith-Schuster. the kicker Ryland and he'll send this one away Cordero Patterson to return it bringing it out of the end zone and only able to get this to the 19 so probably should have opted for the touchback Atlanta now coming out on the field last time I remember their drive stalled but thanks to their kicker booted a long field goal to at least get him three now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone and in our experience how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now, the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it, and he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. So the completion results there in nine yards, and they'll have a second and one forthcoming. Ritter now. That's Cordero Patterson hauling it in. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Ritter will set up to throw it. It's caught on the right side by Robinson. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. They'll wind up getting just a yard, and it's second down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. They wind up losing a couple there, so they go behind the original line of scrimmage. And now third and 11 coming up. We're backed up here. Tough spot. Needing 11 yards to pick up the first. Looking to throw once more. Here's Ritter. Pass taken in by his big tight end. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts. As the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Here's Ritter. breaks a string of five straight connections at its second down. And now to common sight, at least on this drive, a momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try and pick up another first down. Another throw coming up here for Ritter. This throw caught. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 25 seconds to go here in half number one. And they'll try the option on first and goal. It's a one-yard touchdown run, and the Falcons will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. That score that they just gave up there, that's a tough one for their defense to swallow because they've had a tough time through the first two quarters. 
They really were determined to get a stop there, unable to do so. That makes their comeback hopes that much more difficult. Now Young Wei Koo for the extra point. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. So an eight-play drive covering 80 yards. And it was Desmond Ritter taking it himself to finish the drive. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. Here's Rager. He's going to bring this one out. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Pats going to get one final possession in this first half. And the ball backed way up, so thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it, and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball, just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. They'll indeed try to run it out as they start on the ground. And an anxious moment or two there, but they do get him down. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Zappi back to throw. That is caught by Smith-Schuster. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. 18 more yards there and another first down. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. Zappi's throw here taken in by Parker. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. This from 54 yards away. And he missed it. It's no good. And the deficit will stay at three scores. So we have reached halftime now with the visiting Falcons out on top. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. This was an extremely one-sided first half. One team showed up ready to go. The other's been in a daze thus far, but there's still plenty of time left for this one to tighten up significantly. It was a former Longhorn, B. John Robinson, who was tucked to stop in that first half. He wound up finding the end zone on a touchdown run to help give his guys the advantage here at the break. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Patriots trailing here, but they will have the football first as the third quarter is underway. Here's Rager. He's going to bring this one out. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. And the Patriots going to take over here to start quarter number three. Well, they look up at the scoreboard facing that deficit. A three-score game, Charles, but look, there's plenty of time to go here. The old football cliche that comes to my mind is you can't get it all back at once. They probably need something, though, out of this drive, at least three points. Are you trying to say that there's no three-score drive? 
on that play sheet for any of those coordinators. They just don't have it, right? <laughs> You're trying to get it all back. You know you can't get it back in one drive, but maybe cut into it a little bit as you just suggested. Try and create a little bit of momentum, a little bit of a spark, and then maybe that'll carry over. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. That goes as a gain of 11 and a Patriot first down. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Now Zappi. And his throw is going to be incomplete. I'm getting the sense that this offense is getting frustrated. Here we are into the third quarter, and they've had plenty of opportunities to get in sync. Thus far, that hasn't happened. They're looking for answers both on the sidelines and in the huddle looking at each other. A second and 10 now. Third quarter action from Foxborough. Zappi from the gun. And that'll be complete to Stevenson. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. That one good for 13 and a New England first down. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football. Right now, I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. Zappi's throw into the hands of Henry here. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Ten more there and another first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. He's got it to the 43 here. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. And they'll come up second and seven. Looking to throw, Zappi. This complete to Jones. It'll be a gain of five. And that's going to bring up third and two. It's a gain of five. Brings up third and two. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. Zappi on third and two. He's got his target. That's complete. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 20-yard line. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. Zappi off play action. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Disrupting that play and dropping him was Arnold Evacati. We have played three quarters. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Foxborough. It's Patriot football, but they trail here as we begin the fourth quarter. On second down, it's Stevenson. Down he goes at the 23, a pickup of four. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. 
Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. There's Henry. Touchdown, Patriots. Hunter Henry, 23 yards for the touchdown. And the Pats have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. Well, they needed three scores to have any chance. There's the first of the three as they get into the end zone. Yeah, Brandon, I think that our guys at Next Gen Stats in charge of the win probability are probably saying your chances still aren't great. But now, you still got more than three minutes to go. You got to focus on the task at hand, which is going to be getting the football back as quickly as possible. Extra point by Ryland, up and good. And the lead down to 10, 24-14. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And a good job here by the Falcons. Their hands team able to recover it. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. First and 10, it's Robinson. Down to about the 37. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage, use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. On second down, another shot for Robinson. Skirts by him at the 35. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. He was close to flirting with that sideline, but able to stay in bounds like he knows his coach wants him to do and keep that clock moving. Isn't it funny that we're watching this play when we had that discussion just yesterday about this? What do you do in this scenario? What do you, you know, what's your mindset? It appeared to me that he'd totally forgotten that he needed to stay in bounds. And then the last second, oh no, I better, I better get down. And he ended up doing the right thing. But at that point, maybe close to let this slip away. Robinson will try to pick it up. And he is going to have the first down. And that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ball game. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Ritter headed right off the option. Touchdown, Falcons! Desmond Ritter, 31 yards. And the Falcons are an extra point away from making this a three-score game. Well, Charles, he's already proven that he's not afraid to tuck that football down on the option, and he's into the end zone for the second time in the game. And that's exactly what you need from your quarterback, the ability to run the ball fearlessly. And, in fact, many quarterbacks will tell you running the football doesn't scare them. Standing in the pocket and taking blindside hits, that's what terrifies them. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. Yeah. 
And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. So the Patriots coming out now. But we said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD. But unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And, partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. First and 10, Zappi. It gets it into the arms of Parker, complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 17 yards on the play as they try to eat into this 17-point deficit. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit is going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where his coaches... You're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. From the 44 now, here's second and four. Here's Zappi. Open man down the field is Henry. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. 23 yards to pick up there. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores, want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. Another throw coming for Zappi. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. Two yards on the pick up there, and that'll make it second down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. Ike's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd went to ballet school. Got the toes down and stayed in bounds. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 12-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Now they got to get to the line quickly. On first down, here's Zappi. Touchdown! Hunter Henry with now two fourth quarter touchdowns. And the Patriots are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. And yeah, that touchdown counts for their team. But I think it counts more for the fantasy guys, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's just something maybe positive to look at on film. But this one's over, let's be honest. Yeah, I, th I agree with you totally on that one. Extra point by Ryland, up and good. And the lead is trimmed down to 10. That drive goes 80 yards in six plays. And it ends with a New England touchdown. So two scores down, time definitely not an ally, but here comes the onside kick. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a capper on this one. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And still two timeouts defensively, but even if they choose to use those, three kneel downs should be enough to get out of here with a victory. And that's exactly what's being stated into the head coach's headset. Oftentimes they have a guy upstairs who monitors this at the end of the game. A little clock management 101. The defense can stop it twice more as they take a knee here. 
Now the Patriots will use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 35 seconds left to go. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. The Patriots will take their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. Down to a knee goes Ritter, and that should be enough to finish this one off. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something, and they, <laughs> they did in this one. The punt team on now as Pinion sends this one away. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. A higher scoring game, Charles, than we typically see in the National Football League, but fun to watch these offenses. They were really clicking. It seemed like everything that they dialed up worked. Yeah, it certainly was fun to watch from our perspective. How'd you like to be those defensive coaches, though? That wasn't a blast for them at all. And let's face it, they all game plan, they all scout, they all think they're prepared, but executing and stopping teams, that's another matter entirely.